The Raptor engine is the muscle of the SpaceX Starship program. 33 of these Raptor 2 engines power the Super Heavy booster that serves as the vehicle's first stage, and six more are used by the Starship upper stage. For a successful lunar mission, these engines will need to relight successfully on the surface of the moon to take astronauts back to orbit inside Starship. If the engines fail, the astronauts would probably die. Luckily, so far, SpaceX has done very well in working toward the development of a vehicle to land humans on the surface of the moon, especially the new Raptor rocket engine. SpaceX has moved very quickly on development, according to Mark Karasik, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator, who oversees the development of Artemis missions to the moon, and he said that about Raptor. We've seen them manufacture what we call Raptor 1.0, They've since upgraded to Raptor 2.0 that first of all increases performance and thrust and secondly reduces the amount of parts, which reduces the amount of time to manufacture and test. They build these things very fast. Their goal was seven engines a week and they hit that about a quarter ago. So now they're building seven engines a week. But that's still not enough. Elon Musk has his expectations that SpaceX has the capacity of 2,000 Raptors per year. That sounds crazy. But can SpaceX pull it off? We'll find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Rapidly iterating on versions of rockets and rocket engines is a huge advantage for SpaceX. If you, if you have a high production rate, you can have a lot of iterations. Uh, you can try lots of different things, and it's okay if you blow up an engine because you've got a, a, you know, a high production rate, you've got not, a bunch of engines coming after that. Yeah. If you have a small number of engines, then you have to be much more conservative because you can't risk blowing them up. Yep. So that's why you know, one of my cash phrases is, a high production rate solves many ills. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we, we've blown up, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just guessing it. At least 20, maybe over 30 engines. Elon Musk even shared that SpaceX uses super alloys to ensure the efficiency and reliability of its Raptor rocket engine. SpaceX is using SX300 and soon SX500, kind of a modern version of Inconel super alloys. High strength at temperature, extreme oxidation resistance, needed for the around 800 atmosphere hot oxygen rich turbo pump on a Raptor rocket engine. Single crystal super alloys employ small amounts of exotic elements in order to better ensure truly unusual crystal formation in metal structures. In the case of SX alloys, the optimal result is a monolithic metal structure that effectively has no visible grain. Think about wood grain, but in metal. The resulting metal would be a huge monolithic crystal. In other words, uniform down to a near atomic level. These SX super alloys are already used regularly for industrial applications, requiring the ability to reliably operate in extremely corrosive high pressure, high temperature environments for long periods of time. Most frequently seen in gas turbines for energy generation and airplane propulsion. Per Musk, SpaceX takes those alloys a step further, developing its own SX300 and SX500 iterations for the purpose of building a reliable, robust turbo pump for the Raptor propulsion system. In pursuit of the greatest possible efficiency, Raptor's turbo pump will run oxygen rich, meaning that the inherently imperfect combustion process would lean towards excess oxygen in the exhaust rather than excess methane. In simple terms, this choice is particularly motivated by the fact that oxygen molecules are slightly lighter than methane molecules, 15.999U versus 16.04U. More importantly, the higher the pressure in the turbo pump, the higher the pressure in Raptor's combustion chamber, which directly correlates with more efficient combustion and thus a more efficient rocket engine overall. All improvements to its subcomponents will inherently end up benefiting SpaceX's Starship. The Raptor engines are designed to reuse the propellants that initially pump the fuel into the combustion chamber, and with them, SpaceX has also changed how it sets the engine's fuel and oxidizer on fire. While the Falcon 9's Merlin engine injects chemicals with the fuel and oxidizer, the Raptors use spark-based ignition that follows the same principles as the spark plugs used in a traditional car. These igniters provide the initial kick to the fuel oxidizing mixture, and once that reaction starts, it's a self-sustaining action until SpaceX decides to shut the system down. To be more precise, the Raptor engines use dual redundant torch igniters, as explained by SpaceX chief Mr. Elon Musk in 2019. 
In layman's terms, these are a step above the traditional spark plug used in rocket engines and cars, and they are used to ignite a combination of the rocket engine's fuel and oxidizer before primary combustion takes place in the main combustion chamber. Torch igniters are suited to Starship's operational profile as they can enable multiple engine starts, particularly those at high altitude. Once the fuel oxidizer mix is set on fire, the spark plug itself turns off while the torch of flame continues to flow. This enables the engine to save itself from firing the plug multiple times. It also ensures that the mixture inside the primary chamber does not go back into the ignition assembly and cause uncontrolled disassembly. Copper is generally the material of choice for these igniters due to its higher thermal conductivity. Note that Starship is now powered by Raptor 2. It too isn't the first version of the engine. Before SpaceX shipped its first Raptor 2 prototype, it manufactured 100 Raptor 1 engines between the start of full-scale testing from February 2018 and July of 2021. By late 2021 or early 2022, when Raptor 2 took over, the total number of Raptor 1 engines produced likely reached somewhere between 125 and 150, impressive but pale in comparison to SpaceX's Raptor 2 ambitions. From the start, Raptor 2's purpose was to make future Raptors easier, faster, and cheaper to manufacture. The ultimate goal is to eventually reduce the cost of Raptor 2 production to $1,000 per ton of thrust, or $230,000 at Raptor's two current targets of 230 tons, or about 510,000 foot-pounds of thrust. As of mid-2019, Elon Musk reported that each early Raptor 1 prototype cost over $2 million for what would turn out to be 185 tons of thrust. That's about $11,000 per ton. It's not clear if that ever appreciably changed. In response, SpaceX strived to make Raptor 2 simpler wherever possible, removing a large part of the maze of primary, secondary, and tertiary plumbing. In 2022, CEO Elon Musk confirmed that SpaceX had even removed a complex torch igniter system for Raptor 2's main combustion chamber. All that simplification made Raptor 2 much easier to build in theory, and SpaceX's production figures have more than confirmed that theory. Despite those simplifications, SpaceX was also able to boost Raptor 2's thrust by 25% by sacrificing just 1% of Raptor 1's efficiency. Beginning with its first delivery in February 2018, SpaceX produced the first 100 Raptor 1 engines in about 36 months. The first 11 to 12 months of Raptor 2 production, SpaceX has delivered 200 engines. That translates to at least six times the average throughput, but the true figure is even higher. In June of 2019, Musk stated that SpaceX was aiming to build a Raptor engine every 12 hours by the end of the year. As is usually the case, that progress took far longer to realize, but in October 2022, a senior NASA Artemis program official revealed that SpaceX recently achieved sustained production of one Raptor 2 engine per day for a full week. Such a high rate likely making Raptor one of the fastest produced orbital class rocket engines in history. To put this in perspective, Raptor 2 rocket engines produce approximately 510,000 pounds of thrust. That's almost identical to the amount of thrust produced by the RS-25 engine that will be used to power NASA's Space Launch System rocket. The engine was designed and developed by Rocketdyne in the 1970s for the Space Shuttle program, and the company has decades of experience manufacturing those. In 2015, NASA gave Aerojet Rocketdyne a contract worth $1.16 billion to restart the production line for the RS-25 engine. Again, that was money just to re-establish manufacturing facilities, not actually build the engines. NASA's paying more than $100 million for each of those. With this startup funding, the goal was for Aerojet Rocketdyne to produce four of the engines per year. Karasik said that as it builds and tests Raptors, SpaceX is rapidly iterating on these processes and producing higher quality engines. The same happened with Starship. SpaceX is designing its factory here to build a Starship every 72 hours. Building one every three days would produce about 100 a year, allowing SpaceX to reach its goal in a decade. The 1,000-strong fleet, each capable of carrying 100 people, can transport 100,000 settlers or 100 megatons of cargo to Mars in the first year. Compare that to NASA and its SLS system, 
the big rocket that the space agency's been developing for a decade, when the SLS rocket was conceived in 2010 and formally announced in 2011, it was supposed to be launched by the end of 2016 and developed for $10 billion. But there is the fact that the first launch of the NASA SLS had slipped to the end of 2022. So what makes the difference between SpaceX and NASA? The key factor belongs to technology. Though 3D printing had only begun to become more mainstream in the past three to four years, SpaceX had its own special 3D printers 10 years ago. They specify the shape of a tube and no matter how complicated, this machine will perfectly replicate it over and over again. Many components of early Raptor prototypes were manufactured using 3D printing, including turbo pumps and injectors, with the effect of increasing the speed of development and iterative testing. The 2016 subscale development engine had 40% by mass of its parts manufactured by 3D printing. 3D printing is simply much faster than any conventional method and can also work 24 hours a day. The more components that SpaceX can 3D print, the faster and more efficient the manufacturing process will be. Without the ability to 3D print, it could take days or weeks to recast a component based on updated specifications. Musk and his team always have amazing machines in their possession. The Tesla Gigapress program is a prime example. It's a series of aluminum die-cast machines manufactured by the IDRA Group, headquartered from Italy. They're notable for being the largest high-pressure die-casting machine in current production with a clamping force of 55,000 to 61,000 kilonewtons. Each machine weighs about 410 to 430 tons. Base specification Gigapress machines had been included in IDRA's catalog since 2018 with the usage of a customized OL6100 CS Gigapress started by Tesla Incorporated in late 2020 for the production of chassis parts for the Tesla Model Y. Shots of molten aluminum weighing 80 kilograms are injected into the cold chamber casting mold with a velocity of 10 meters per second that's 22 miles per hour or 36 kilometers per hour. The cycle time is about 80 to 90 seconds. That allows an output rate of 40 to 45 castings per hour or 1,000 castings per day. And that productivity is simply invincible. More importantly, SpaceX has an excellent team. Musk has always had a knack for hiring brilliant young engineers, busting their tail for the boss. They're clear about their goals. The rocket is being designed to assist us to reach Mars. Willingly? Why? Because Musk empowers them to go fast, do cool things, and very soon to see their machines fly. Engineers at SpaceX are responsible for not only designing and maintaining the rocket, but also designing and maintaining the system that builds the rug. In the development of Starship, prototype engineers produced a knuckle seamer, a revolutionary welding tool, and it was designed to speed up Starship dome tank production and boost weld efficiency. Engineers have also created a shielded X-ray computer to check the accuracy of their welding. Since X-ray teams must typically clear the work area before using radiation, inspecting the welds on an entire spacecraft can take an entire day. The new shielded X-ray machine could save teams time by allowing them to perform weld inspection in a matter of hours. Besides, Elon Musk has had a lot of experience with the working schedule. He lived through production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 18, building up factories, changing processes, spending many sleepless nights, and going through all manner of mental agony. Now Tesla is making as many as 10,000 cars per week. And Musk has brought lessons learned from Tesla's assembly line so workers don't burn out. They'll work three 12-hour days and then have four-day weekends. Then they'll work four 12-hour shifts with a three-day weekend. Thus, with four shifts, Boca Chica can operate at full capacity, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX is throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. Back to the Raptor engine, although SpaceX manufactures all of its rocket engines and thrusters at the Hawthorne headquarters, each must pass through McGregor, where the company tests each new engine off the assembly line as well as those being developed for future missions to orbit and beyond before each one can be used on a flight mission. The company's headquarters and factory in Southern California gets a lot of attention, but most of the noisy, dirty, and critical testing work is done just outside the small central Texas town nestled in amid the farm fields. 
SpaceX's engine testing facility on 4,300 acres of land in McGregor, Texas, just south of the city of Waco, is undergoing new development and testing related to the Raptor engine for Starship and Super Heavy. With five test bays, the facility will soon become a hub for Raptor 2 engine assembly, with a new factory now under construction. This is taking place as the Merlin engine and stage testing related to the upcoming Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy flights continue. In July 2021, SpaceX announced they would be building a second production facility for Raptor engines, this one at the McGregor 4,280-acre site. The Dallas Morning News reported in July that SpaceX would break ground soon and the facility will concentrate on the serial production of Raptor 2, while the California facility will produce Raptor vacuum and new experimental Raptor designs. The new facility is expected to eventually produce 800 to 1,000 rocket engines a year. That's approximately two to four every day. If all goes according to plan, that facility could also become the highest output rocket factory ever built, churning out hundreds of Raptor engines each year to outfit a vast interplanetary fleet of starships and the Earth-bound Super Heavy boosters that will send them on their way to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. By then, space colonization will no longer be a pipe dream. The idea of having a sustainable city on the surface of Mars seems straight out of a science fiction novel, yet it's become a more plausible and perhaps possible endeavor in recent years thanks to innovations in reusable technology and by a private space company. You probably know what I'm talking about. That's right, SpaceX is the company of one of the richest billionaires on the planet, Elon Musk, and SpaceX successfully achieved many accomplishments in a very short period of time. They have some fantastic initiatives and ideas with Starship, the world's largest rocket. This is such great news for the rocket manufacturing industry. However, other competitors of SpaceX, like Blue Origin, United Launch Alliance, Boeing, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, they're also expanding slowly, although their developments are stagnant. To conquer Mars, Elon Musk believes it will require a fleet of a thousand ships. Musk, in fact, aims to reach a point where the company builds a starship each week. And after that, maybe they'll go faster. SpaceX is designing a factory here to build a starship every 72 hours, which means one every three days. Building one every three days would produce about 100 a year, allowing SpaceX to reach its goal in a decade. The 1,000-strong fleet, each capable of carrying 100 people, could transport 100,000 settlers or 100 megatons of cargo to Mars in the first year. Well, the idea seemed crazy, but he's actually serious about the plan, and it's not a joke. To achieve these set targets, Starship's in the process of development day in and day out. Elon Musk always wants to improve Starship, designed to be a fully reusable launch vehicle that will be the largest object to ever fly as soon as possible. After Elon Musk has had a lot of experience with it, he lived through production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 18, building up factories, and Elon Musk has had a lot of experience with it. He lived through the production hell of Tesla in 2017 and 18, building up the factories, changing processes, spending many sleepless nights, and going through all manners of mental agony. And now Tesla is making as many as 10,000 cars per week. Musk has brought lessons learned from the Tesla assembly line so the workers don't burn out. They'll work three 12-hour days and have four-day weekends. Then they'll work four 12-hour shifts and get a three-day weekend. Thus, with four shifts, the Boca Chica site can operate at full capacity, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX is also throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. But even if we don't talk about the great plans that SpaceX has for the future, we can still see those great things happening today. Future vehicles are lining up at the production site, including parts for even Booster 15 and Ship 32. CEO Elon Musk even says that SpaceX's South Texas Starship aims to build up to five of the two-stage mega rockets in 2023. And let's be honest, it's pretty darn complicated. But the one thing SpaceX has shown just over a year is the increasing confidence in building rockets. When it comes to innovation in rocket science, is there anyone better in the world? Probably not. Compare NASA and its Space Launch System. 
The development of SLS started in 2011 as a replacement for the retired space shuttle, as well as the canceled Ares 1 and 5 launch vehicles. As a shuttle-derived vehicle, the Space Launch System reuses hardware from the Space Shuttle program. That would include the solid rocket boosters and the RS-25 first stage engines. However, an original flight date of late 2016 has been delayed by nearly six years. Ridiculously, the SLS has been in development for several years longer than it took NASA to develop a launcher, lander, and land on the moon back in the 1960s. Moreover, it's crazy expensive. For fiscal years 2011 through 2022, the SLS program had expended funding totaling $23.8 billion in nominal dollars. This is equivalent to about $27.5 billion in 2022 dollars. That's using the NASA New Start inflation indices. No one is sure how quickly or how well Starship will work, whereas the SLS rocket looked backward for its technology, SpaceX is seeking to go forward with an even larger, fully reusable vehicle with more lift capacity. A lot of Starship's technology is experimental and cutting edge, so of course there'll be hiccups along the way, but the pain? It'll be worth the ultimate reward. An efficient rocket and spacecraft that can fly often for hundreds or even tens of millions of dollars. Next, we should talk about Blue Origin's plans to build the new Glenn rocket. It was first unveiled in September of 2016 with the goal of sending crew and cargo to orbit, whereas the New Shepard isn't capable of reaching orbit. Blue Origin claims the rocket can launch 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit and 13 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit. Once built, it'll be able to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which can carry 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 8,300 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit. New Glenn is clearly bigger, more powerful, but it's important to remember that SpaceX also offers a three-core variant called the Falcon Heavy. With a total of 27 Merlin engines delivering 3.1 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, it can send 63,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 26,700 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit. And well, that's before you get to the underdevelopment Starship, capable of sending over 100 tons to low Earth orbit. However, this rocket of Blue Origins has been delayed many, many times. At the 2016 unveiling, the firm expected to launch it before the end of the decade. In February 2021, Blue Origin announced it pushed the launch back from late 2021 to the fourth quarter of 2022. But once again in March 2022, it turned no earlier than Q4 2023. And as it comes to Blue Origin, they're known for their delays in delivering two BE-4 engines to ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. The engine is running three years behind as of August 2022, and Blue Origin had experienced a number of problems, both technical and managerial, with the engine development program, leaving the engine still not yet flight qualified. Pathfinder engines are currently undergoing testing at ULA facilities, and the first two flight engines were delivered to ULA for integration at the Vulcan Center rocket on October 31, 2022. But with SpaceX, they're now building seven engines a week. SpaceX has moved very quickly on development, says Mark Karasik, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator, speaking about Raptor. We've seen them manufacture what was Raptor 1.0, then they upgraded to Raptor 2.0 that first of all increases performance and thrust, and secondly reduces the amount of parts, reducing the amount of time to manufacture and test. They build these engines very fast. Their goal was seven a week. They hit that about a quarter ago, so now they're building seven a week. To put it into perspective, the Raptor 2 rocket engine produces approximately 510,000 pounds of thrust. That's almost identical to the amount of thrust produced by the RS-25 engine that would be used to power NASA's Space Launch System rocket. The engine was designed and developed by Rocketdyne in the late 1970s for the Space Shuttle program, and the company has decades of experience manufacturing these. In 2015, NASA gave Aerojet Rocketdyne a contract worth $1.16 billion to restart the production line for the RS-25 engine. Again, that was money just to reestablish manufacturing facilities, not actually build the engines. NASA's paying more than $100 million for each of those. 
With the startup funding, the goal was for Aerojet Rocketdyne to produce four a year. As it builds and tests Raptors, SpaceX is rapidly iterating on the processes and producing higher quality engines. Are you impressed with what SpaceX has achieved? Well, let us know about it right there in the comments section. And that'll about wrap up today's episode. Hey, your support motivates us to create more quality videos, so be sure and leave a comment. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.